Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. We're up to episode 6, and when we left off, I was adding some scenery here to this log flume. Some Egyptian walls, make a little tunnel thing here. There we go, and then a statue on top of it. Some more roofs to complete the structure, making it kind of a stairway type thing. And then the final roof, and some statues on top of it. There we go, it's done. Some more statues on the other end and save my game there, which I edited out. There are some Q-Line TVs for the log flume, it's already full, making lots of money, which is good. And we're gonna adjust the ticket prices for these rides. Damn people aren't paying it. Damn you, stupid guests. I think a good option for this game would be some kind of unified ticket, ride ticket system where you would uh, like buy tickets from a stall like in real parks and then spend maybe five on a roller coaster or and three on thrill rides maybe and gentle rides one ticket or something like that <coughs> so you wouldn't have to adjust the prices all the time Anyways, now I'm adding some flowers into this bizarre area here. Going with yellow ones to fit the theme well. Some fences around. And then it's time to adjust some handymen. Hire some new ones. Make sure they have a nice patrol area. Get all the paths covered so no pukes will build up anywhere. And I always like to have a couple handymen that don't have any patrol areas, just wander around everywhere. Making sure all the paths are covered with security guards as well. <coughs> Wouldn't want those benches and things to be vandalized by those guests who don't want to pay for the thrill rides. And there we have it, all the paths are covered. Now I think it's time to start working on <coughs> the first roller coaster. Going with the junior one because it's cheap and easy to build. See we have the ladybird cars and log cars. One thing I miss about RCT1 is those uh, spinning cars you had for the junior coaster. They were pretty funny or fun to use. <coughs> Except that you couldn't bank the turns at all which is a good improvement here. Let's see where to put the station. In the most cramped place, of course, to make it interesting. And make sure the trains are as long as possible. And then start with the lift hill. Up, up and away. At this point I decided to speed up the video even further to fit the building of this coaster into a single video. It's now three times normal speed opposed to double speed earlier. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think it's too fast or, <laughs> or too slow. So I decided to make the lift hill a bit uh, shorter. Going for some helixes all around the place. Some hills here into the bazaar area. Just 
going to be difficult because there's a lot of stalls and the log flew in the way, of course. It's going to take a while before I get a design that works here. Going all over the place. Trying all the different types of curves and hills and whatnots. I think eventually it won't even go this way much. It's gonna turn back towards the station. We got a new roller coaster invented, the compact inverted coaster. This is a lot of work to get those curves and things in place. I like to, uh, instead of building into an empty area to make it easy, I like to start in the middle of places where there already are rides and stuff, so make it harder, but also the end result is more exciting and such. So now we got some turns there, and I think this is close to the final design here that's yeah, not gonna fit through there no chance gotta think of something else might as well take this time to talk about the other coasters I've built so far in this park uh, the next one is going to be a mini roller coaster with those rocket shaped cars and it's gonna be near the roto drop ride on that mountain and then the third one is a pirate themed wooden coaster which has a loop and plenty of those uh, water splash sections and then the, finally the fourth coaster is a dueling uh, hyper coaster it's gonna be near the enterprise ride and that thing's gonna make me a lot of money. So now I got some big helixes there and now I'm aiming to build another lift hill in the same place going uh, in intertwining with the first lift hill. And there we have it. Now how to connect it to the existing track. Helixes of course. Not many options with this type of coaster. There it's connected. Now let's add a little hill here. drop actually and now I'm going to build uh, back to the station so I can test out how the trains behave on this track it's not finished yet of course but half of it it is done now where to hell am I going to fit the entrance that is the question that's what I get for choosing such a <laughs> tight location here. Okay, there we go, and now I'm going to test it. Whee! Whoa, that looks fast. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And there it goes into the second lift hill. Now also making it some adjustments here and And then on to continue with the construction from the second lift hill. That's gonna be a tight spot to fit in. It's not gonna work. Let's try something else. Go 
this way instead. Nope, that ain't gonna work either. We have a balloon stall invented. Yay! This reminds me when I was building my uh, uh, coaster contest entry called Carnival Mega Dual Twister. Because at first it was a junior coaster. <laughs> it was proved out to be too ambitious to build a quadruple <laughs> junior roller coaster. The excitement rating, I mean uh, intensity rating ended up being 13 or 12 or something like that. So I changed it changed it to the uh, what's it called hyper twister coaster in the lift tail part you can see a bend that's from when it was a junior coaster because you can make curved lift tails of course anyway now we have a little tunnel there I'm going for another helix of course I think the yeah, it's blocking the banana boat, so that was a bad idea. Gotta build something else there, so they don't get stuck. In that park I was talking about earlier, uh, Rocky Mountain Miners, I, after failing to build a quad junior coaster, I eventually did later on build a standard junior coaster with just one track. And it still ended up being the longest junior coaster I ever made. Not the most exciting one though, but there's still room for a scenery, so maybe it will someday be the most exciting as well. Anyways, here I made a little tunnel and tweaked the roof of it to look nice, but then got demolished anyway, so another large helix and over the path on to the other side for some small helixes and we invented a bobsleigh coaster and we have the patented triple small helix maneuver <laughs> whatever i like to do that often and now how the hell am i gonna get back to the station that is a good question I'm gonna have to make a lift till if I want to add a block break somewhere. Well, actually, the lift hill does serve as a block break, but anyway. Now, what's going on here? Why did I build another station there? I have no idea. Anyway, we gotta build a tunnel here to connect the track and then spend some brakes. Track is not a complete circuit. Oh no. It needs some final adjustments to get the track connected. They're not on the same level, I think. Yeah, one is 4.5, the other is 3. Now I'm re rebuilding the helixes for some reason. And then down we go again, and a break here. No. An S bend, and there we have a break, and it's complete. Now to test it. But we're pretty close to the end of the time limit. And I don't think the test results will be seen in this episode. So you gotta wait for those a bit longer. There it goes through the loops. I mean helixes. Whee! Whoa! And up the second lift hill and ah, down and oh my god, whoa, whoa! Ah, somebody's puking at this point. Ah, whee! And uh, <coughs> now I'm gonna have to pause the recording so. I'll see you and the test results in the next episode.